Hi guys, today we're building a localization app, which is going to localize some text um, inside our application to a specific language. And it'll do that automatically using um, bindings and properties. So let's just build um, the standard boilerplate and then we'll continue. This thing needs to move. Uh, what do we want? Let's go with a vertical box. <clears throat> it's going to have a choice box for languages. Um, locale or locale. Actually, I don't know how it's pronounced. Um, choice box for languages. It's populated with what does it take? It takes a list. Let's go with English, um, French, and German. Gives us a mix of languages to play with. And box get children. Add the choice box, and then we also need something like text, I suppose, that we can sort of show. <clears throat> Let's put spacing 15 and just some text here of the world. Let's increase the font so it's visible. And uh, let's see if we can run this. Yeah, that's about right. So we have uh, the English language, French, and German. And what if. So, what I want to do is to select one of these. And I want this text to translate automatically to that language. This is going to be quite useful if you're building a multi language app, for example. So uh, let's create a class for that, I suppose. Localization service. Let's go with that. And that class is going to allow us to create a binding, string binding, to be more specific. Localized uh, string binding for a given key. And actually, that will do. <clears throat> for that to work, we need some kind of a translation. So get localized string for a given key and a given language. Let this be by default uh, set selected get select uh, get selection model select first so it's already selected. Get localized string. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to have a map between a language and the translations. So we might as well introduce something like um, interface translation. 
which only has one thing really um, translate string text so pass in the text that translation returns us another string in which case this could be a language and translation localization data How about that we should be able to populate that map by adding add um, Yeah, how about that? And then the translation, I guess. Alternatively, we could simplify this. We could take a map of string to string. Because then the call site is simplified. And then I can initialize my service over here somewhere. Yep, I can start populating stuff. Add data. What? Oh, um, data. For English, it's going to say hello world. Actually, I need to pass in the key first. So, oh, I'm still in Java. There is no map off. Shame. I have to build this map manually. So hello world is the actual translation to the English language. As for the key, I'll just use the word hello. This could be any string key. <clears throat> I'll do that for the other two languages. We're going to be building this dynamically, um, as in hard coding this. However, a potentially better approach, actually, indeed, a better approach would be to take a a resource bundle instead of a map string to string because then you can have resource bundles um, as external data in resources so that you don't have to hard code translations into your app. The string key is exactly the same because that's how our translator knows uh, how to translate that. Hello world in French and German. Yeah, I don't speak any of these languages, unfortunately. So I'm just going to go this with this uh, approach to identify that this is supposed to be in French and this is supposed to be in German. And we'll just populate our data base per se. So now that we've done this, we should be able to, well, get rid of that and just say this text has its property bound to um, service localized string binding for a specific key and that key is hello with this approach it should automatically change when i change the language but first of all our service needs to know that the language has been changed so we need to keep track of the language because when we create a binding that binding typically needs to have at least one observable property um, to listen for changes because otherwise it doesn't know when something has changed. So we're going to create another property, an object property. Essentially when you're creating a JavaFX app it's a lot easier if you create all your primitive data um, in the property format because then you can listen for changes, you can bind to other properties 
The property and the binding approaches are just really nice in JavaFX. This is where you get sort of um, view bound to the model and you don't actually need any kind of um, calls to then change view when the model has changed because it's bound. Probably want to pass in the default. Um, so when we construct this service, we're going to pass in default uh, some defaults. That looks all right. Now, in terms of population, I need to have a concrete implementation of this thing. Um, map translation, which implements translation. Uh, it's just basically I'm going to take a map from string to string and use that as its internal data, I would thought. It should work. And then we'll just take that, get text. Actually, uh, this is supposed to be probably key, right? Rather than text, just key. Probably want a default as well. So we get key, if it doesn't exist, then say no translation or something like that. And then I can use this to localization data, put that thing, new map translation data. There we go, that looks all right. Get localized string is going to be get this translation from here based on this language and translate. There we go, that worked out nicely. Obviously this could fail if this object isn't found. So you'll have to do something with that. What if this doesn't exist? Probably want to return some kind of default as well, something like this, like no language present or something. You probably don't want to throw an exception though. Right, on to the most important bit now. So in order to create a custom binding, you would use the bindings class, which is this one. And then you can create a bunch of bindings, like a billion double float integer. So basically for each primitive you have a binding for that. And you also have the generic create object binding. We're going to use this one, create string binding, since we're returning, returning string binding. It takes a function which returns the updated value, comma, and then it takes the observable value. And that observable value is going to drive the change. So if this thing changes, or rather the value stored in this property changes, then this function will be recomputed. And that function is this, right? So we're just calling this thing once this thing changes uh, by using the key that we want and by using the new value now uh, for the language. Default is English. 
Now we need to notify the service when something has changed. So we need some kind of set here maybe, set selected language and it will use this to select it so that this thing can reevaluate itself. And now we need to know when something was selected. <clears throat> now, interestingly, this value property of this choice box also returns object property. So we could potentially just bind the two and not worry about this thing. So if we bind one to the other, something like, uh, actually it's the other way around, it's the service that needs to be bound. Bind to this choice box's value property and then everything is just going to work, right? When we select first, so hello world, and if I change to different language, it automatically changes the text property of this text object based on the binding that we created, which is in turn based on the key that we used. So if I use a different key, um, something like this, then it should say no translation because there is indeed no translation for the key that I entered. Okay, this completes the sort of core idea of how you might go about doing your own localization service. Alternatively, you can use um, the library that I just recently released, FX localization, I think it's called. I'll link, I'll link you the um, library Maven coordinates in the description. It basically does the same thing, but it has slightly more options like setting a resource bundle as well, which is something like this, I suppose. So you take this thing again, and then something like resource bundle. The idea is the same. So you can create another concrete implementation of this translation uh, interface, have it called bundle translation. And then all you need is, again, the same thing, because you can think of resource bundle as being a map between a string and another string. Okay, on that note, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.